Oh, hey, what's up? Y'all just caught me laying out for uh, the other half of the miter station. So, let's get into some of that. I'm going to come 30 inches off the bench that you're sitting on right now. And you might have seen in the uh, first half video. And I'm going to see uh, how long I can make this. Whether it's 6 foot like the one you're sitting on. Or if it's 7 foot. Because I think I've decided I'm going to put my drill press down over there. So, stay tuned. I'm going to build some cool shit. So I did a quick mock-up of the door like I have on the other side of the shop over there. You can uh, zoom in. The two doors that I built in the very first remodeling video. And this is what I come up with. And I came up with 80 inches to this line and that will leave me enough room for my drill press it's not quite seven foot and I struck another line down here which will give me 30 inches from there to hold the miter saw that is sitting there now it's only 27 inches on the base and I decided to give it 30 that way, I will be able to still be able to sweep on either side of it because miter saws are messy. So, plus, I've seen other people build miter saws where they don't have enough room to swing. And even though it looks like everything is contained within the 27 inch base, I don't want to take any chances. I want to make sure everything fits. So 30 inches will give me more than enough room. I'll have more than enough swing and everything will be gravy. It'll be good. All right, so these are some pallet wood stringers that I've already ran through the milling process. The joiner, the table saw, the planer, you know, so-and-so. They're looking pretty good at this point. Now in the last couple of videos, I used these same type of stringers to build a frame and panel type construction for my planer cart and the first half of my miter saw station. The first half of my miter saw station contains all of my drawers that are going to be used in my shop. Well, at this point anyways. Now, I didn't go into a whole lot of detail in either one of those videos on how to build these panels. So I am going to be going into a little more detail here. Here you can see what the one inch screws are that I'll be using through most of this construction. The reason I like this type of construction is because pallet wood is much cheaper than buying plywood. It is readily available and if you find some good sources for pallets, most of this wood could be very pretty. What I'm using here is a lot of hardwood that comes on some pretty sturdy pallet. So after getting my half laps all done, I need to fill these panels up with some, well, more panels. So I took some of these half inch boards I already had milled up. I cut them to length and we went ahead and we inserted them into the frame. Now, once they're inserted into the frame, I'm going to use some brad nails and some glue, and we are going to go ahead and stick these things in from the back side. I did run a dado, as you can see me filling with glue right now, and that's where these half inch pallet boards are going to rest. Well, for the rest of their lives, I suppose. See, the life of these pallet boards starts out pretty rough. Because usually, pallet boards are not good enough to be sold as good lumber. So they end up on pallets. Well, when you take a pallet board off a pallet, you think, hey, this looks like pretty good lumber. I'm going to use it. And you do. And guess what? It turns out pretty. I mean, look at this. 
That's some pretty freaking wood. I can't believe it was on a pallet. So at this point, any sanding you may want to do, you're probably going to want to do it now. Because this next step is going to make it a little hard to sand anything. Because I pre-drill all the holes because this is hardwood pallet wood. And I don't want to split it out. And then I put a shit ton of these one inch screws in from the front to hold it. Now, if you haven't seen my previous videos, then you don't know that I really like these one inch screws. They kind of look like upholstery buttons to me. Not only that, running them in through the front, I think adds a lot of strength. It'll hold it pretty good. So in episode one of this miter station saga, I built the toe kick separately from the miter station itself. That way I could level the toe kick and then build my miter station off of it. I'm going to do the same thing for this cabinet. I'm going to build the toe kick and then build the, my, the rest of it off of this level base. Because my floors are garbage. I mean, they're way out of whack. Now, as much as I hate to admit this, I didn't have any 80 inch pallet stringers available. So I had to run down to Blows and pick up a couple of two by fours, which weren't straight. I had to come back and mill them just the same as I had to do the pallet stringer. So my phone died while I was charging it. I went ahead and I got all my shims out and I started leveling everything. Everything is great. Except for the fact it's two inches too big. I didn't allow for the damn toe kick. So now I have to take it off and cut two inches off the inside stringers. So let's do that. Just so you know, I am not a poster boy for table saw safety. As a matter of fact, at work, I may have been a cause for a few of the safety meetings. So I don't recommend doing it this way. I mean, this is actually pretty stupid, but at least I make sure the table saw blade has stopped before I go reaching for the off cut. This has bit me in the thumb at least once and that was enough for me. So from now on, I make sure the saw blade is stopped before I go reaching for it. Another thing I'm making sure to do while performing this retarded task is to stay to the side of the blade. That way, if it does decide to chuck one of them off cuts, it doesn't hit me. It hits the crap behind me. Again, not the safest way to do this, but it seems to have worked out pretty well for me so far. Again, don't try this at home, kids. So I got it all back in there. And because I left the blocks and everything, it went back in and we're good. So now we can move on to the rest of it. I'll give you a little bit of footage of my planer card here in action. This thing's working fantastic, by the way. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link up here somewhere for you. Now, these boards are 91 inches long. They started out around 7 eighths thick and are roughly a little over 3 and a half inches wide. I know they get ripped down to 3 and a half inches wide, so that's why I know they are over 3 and a half inches wide. Some of these boards that are now 3 quarter inches thick got ripped down to the 2 inch that you see me assembling here. This is going to be the face frame for this cabinet. This face frame is going to go together with pocket holes, as you can see me doing here. And I'm using my table saw as a nice flat surface to hold everything nice and flush. That way it don't move around on me and I get a nice clean look when everything's all screwed together. So those three and a half inch boards that I was talking about earlier got cut down to 78 inches and we need to pocket hole some of those. And this seemed to be the best way for me to do it, and it works out pretty well. I'm actually surprised it fit. Well, it fits now. Once I get my ceilings in place, 
I'm going to have to figure out another way to do boards this long and pocket hole the ends. I mean, there's only about a half inch to get it in and out. I'm not going to put a solid back on this cabinet. I'm going to take two of these three and a half inch boards and place them in an L shape. One on the very back side and one on the very bottom side. What that'll do is that'll create enough rigidity so that I shouldn't have any racking. See, just like that. One goes on the back, one goes at the top. That top one will actually give me a place to screw the top to, and the one on the bottom will let me screw it down to the base. My workbench is only 74 inches long. And we know these rails are uh, 78 inches long. Let's see how this goes. Woo! Well, that went better than I expected it was going to. So, just like the other side, I'm going to go ahead and throw some pocket holes in. And we will have half this thing assembled. We're actually getting somewhere now. On the bottom, I'm using a half inch spacer here to lift that bottom board up. Well, a half inch, obviously. You'll see why here in a little bit. And after that last screw, little victory dance. And, well, we can move on to the face frame now. I made the face frame the full 80 inches. That way it would cover up those half lap joints. They're not the greatest half lap joints in the world, but... You know, they don't look terrible, but I think the face frame looks a lot better than the half lap show and do. So before you freak out, I see the bow. I know it's there. We'll fix it. Just hold your horses. The bow will go away. I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill this all the way through because I'm going to use those same button head screws that I use everywhere else. The black ones, except these ones are like an inch and a half or two inches long. I can't remember. I want to say they're two inches long. So the face frame is made out of pine. It's not made out of hardwood. I guess I don't really have to pre-drill it. It just kind of become a habit now. That way I don't take a chance of splitting it later on and I don't have to rework it. I really don't want to make a new face frame at this point. And then, of course, my dad comes in to visit, stands in front of the camera. You know, here we go. So just like the L's in the back, I go ahead and I put a couple of these pan heads right in the top of the face frame. That way it holds it nice and sturdy. See, I told you that bow would go away. Now can anybody tell me where the hell my L's went? Do you notice it? My L's are not on the back. Why am I putting my L's back in? I did not notice this until I was editing this. They were on there earlier when I was putting the face frame on, but they weren't on there when I flipped it over. Why am I putting them back in? I do not understand what the hell I did here. Anyways, I'm putting countersink screws in the back of this thing. That way they don't interfere with me putting it up against the wall. I'll have to figure the L thing out later. So before I put the cabinet in place, I have to put a bottom on the base. And I'm going to use some of this leftover OSB that I had taken down from the shelves that were where the first half of the miter saw station is sitting now. So this is half inch OSB. This is why I used a half inch spacer when I put the L's in earlier. Because the cabinet is going to sit right over top of this OSB. You can see I got it screwed down there. Now it's time to put the cabinet in. Now I did this the same way when I put the first half in, but the drawers covered up the OSB on the bottom. It didn't really matter. I should have put the OSB over top of the L's in this application because that OSB is going to work as a bottom shelf. It still works as a bottom shelf, but it probably would have looked a lot better and been a lot flatter had I put it inside. See, it doesn't really look that good. But anyway, I'm not changing it now. It's already down and in there. So I'm going to sink some 3 inch screws into the four studs I have available for mounting this thing. And I'm going to go ahead and secure it to the base. 
I'm going to keep the level there. That way I can make sure everything stays nice and level because that makes a big difference in getting everything coplanar with the other half of this miter saw station. If everything's not level, it's not going to work very well. So I spent two days milling up all this wood you see here. I have the inch and three quarter pieces glued up here and here. I have the two inch pieces glued up over there for what will be the center stand. And I have some pieces over there that we're going to be cutting down for the door frames. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get this out of clamps and we are going to run these two, this one and this one, inch and three quarter pieces through the plant. To get all this squeeze out cleaned up and everything uh, nice and clean. And then we'll get them back in clamps and that'll be, well, pretty close to being done. We'll whack off a couple of corners and get her stained up. Then we'll move on to the center section. Here is another shot of that wonderful planer stand I had told y'all about earlier. It's a little better shot. Get to see how pretty it looks. But it's uh, peeling through these tops pretty good. And I do suggest you clean your rollers and maybe install a new set of blades before pushing some massive slabs like this through it because it does create a great deal of stress on your planer. It took about two passes on each side to get these nice and cleaned up and I brought them in around an inch and a half thick because that's where I needed them to be. So after running through the planer, I set them in place and kind of moved them around a little bit. Figured out which board I wanted to be on the front, which is this one, so I'm going to put an F on it. You know, for front. This needs to be jointed, so we're going to put an A and a B, because we're going to use the AB method on a joiner. And this is going to be the back. We're going to cut a slight angle on the back so that there's less showing here on the back. And that is what we will end up cutting the length off. Right now we're like 25 inches this way, still 91 inches that way. We'll trim all that down once it's one solid piece because it's still two pieces. So let's go ahead and go to the joiner. So I was unable to find the hardwood pallets like I had used in previous videos and these are pine so I'm not sure how well this is going to perform opposed to the other ones but it does make it a lot easier to push it across the planer because it is considerably lighter. Then once we get it all planed up we got to lay everything out for our length and for our biscuits because I'm going to be using biscuits just for alignment. That way I don't have to do an incredible amount of sanding when I get everything glued together because this 25 inch top is not going to go through my planer. I didn't feel like y'all wanted to watch me use a Harbor Freight biscuit joiner. So we'll just go ahead and move on to the glue up here. And just like any glue up, I smear some glue on it, use that little silicone roller. Them things are great. If y'all ain't got one of them rollers, you might want to consider getting one of those. Not only does it spread your glue out pretty quick, it actually saves you some glue. You don't need nearly as much with that roller. And if you've made it this far in the video, maybe consider uh, giving me a like or subscribing. I like to build a lot of stuff out of pallets and I like to save a lot of money. So if you want to save a lot of money and build stuff out of pallets, keep coming back to my channel and I'll keep putting out content for y'all. Alright, let's go ahead and get this glue up finished up. Go ahead and smear some glue on the other side. We'll 
get it all rolled out and then we'll lay it down get it all clamped up and it'll be all ready to go I let that glue sit overnight and come out the next day took all the clamps off of it now we'll go ahead and use this circular saw and we'll cut the edges off now I'm using a bore track that kind of helps me keep everything in line it's not a great tool, but it's better than trying to do it freehand. I get much better cuts that way. Now we got it all cut to length. So let's move on to the table saw and cut the width on this thing. I don't know if I told y'all, but I want this to be around 24 inches. That will leave me an overhang of 2 inches on the front. The reason I want a 2 inch overhang on the front is because I want to be able to clamp stuff down to this work surface. That's right. I am not just going to be using this to cut miters on. No, I am planning on this being a workbench as well as a miter saw station. So I want to be able to put clamps on at least two sides of this thing. Only one of these next cuts is actually imperative to this situation. That would be the one that's going to be closest to the miter saw. So I'm going to cut a 45 degree angle on that corner. And then just to kind of make it uniform, I'm going to cut it at 45 degrees on the other side as well. Now, it's not really needed, but because of the height of this thing, it is at the same height as my hip. So I don't want to be busting my hip on all these rough corners. And then, just like the other one, I put a round over on the bottom, and I put a 45 degree chamfer on the top. And then we go ahead and we sand it to 80 grit. Why 80 grit and not 120? Because of the finish that I'm going to be putting on this thing. Speaking of finish, I'm going to go ahead and stain it now. The stain I, I am using is the Min Wax's Aged Barrel. Now. I would suggest that you do this before putting it up to the wall, but I get a little excited when I get things built and I want to put them in place immediately. So then I either have to tape it off or go really slow with my brush. The reason I only sanded it to 80 grit is because I will be using the general finishes oil-based satin on the top. And what that will do is that will let the armor seal soak in and then I will sand that to 120 and put on another coat. And then I will sand that and I will put on another coat. And then I will hit that with a buffing pad and then I will wipe on another coat. But what you see now is me working on the center of this miter saw station to bring all three compartments together. So if you look closely, you can see the different tones of wood that red one is a piece of the Osage orange that I've been saving for a couple of years now. Actually, since my first YouTube video. But anyway, I thought it would look pretty cool there at the front. Kind of separate everything. But the other tones of wood are pine and some of the oak and different types of hardwoods that come from the hardwood pallets that I had left over. I just, I had them left over, didn't have anything to use them for, so I figured I'd, uh, Kind of put them in between the pine there a little bit. I don't have a circle cutting jig. So I use that circular saw to cut off the majority of the rounded edge. And I'm going to use this belt sander to kind of refine it a little bit. And I know it looks kind of wonky. Like maybe that left side is less than the right side. Or maybe more than the right side. I don't know. The camera angle, I think, throws it off. It looked really bad when I was cutting it off. And believe me, I've looked at it four or five times, and it is not off at all. It's just the way the camera's looking. So I'm going to do the same thing to this one that I've done to the other two so far. I'm going to put a chamfer on the top, and I'm going to put a round over on the bottom. Just on the front edge, though. I'm going to leave the back three edges a little blocky. Why? Because I, I wanted to catch the dust. There's going to be dust. No matter what I do, there's going to be dust. So now that we have all that, I went ahead and I put the first coat of armor seal on this thing. And I stained it. 
obviously. Now I got to figure out where I want this saw to sit and get everything measured perfectly. Once I get that done, we can go ahead and bolt it down. You might be wondering why I'm bolting this thing down before putting the top in place. Well, I have an idea. I am going to move this all in one section. You'll have to uh, keep watching to see how I do that. But anyway, I want to get this thing bolted down so I know where to drill the hole for the dust collection and the cord. To bolt this down, I'm just using the same lag bolts that I had in the other miter saw station. I think there's some inch and a half lag bolts or something like that. They got a pretty big head on them. Once we got everything bolted down, we can go ahead and try it out, make sure everything is still swinging like it should. And then I want to make sure that I'm not going to hit the wall with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a square up so that you can see, or better yet, so that I can see that I'm not going to hit the wall. I probably should have done this before I bolted it down, but you know, here we are. Once I see everything's in good working order, I want to go ahead and drill the hole for the dust collection. Now, I had originally bought one of those fancy desk inserts to cover up this hole, but you need a two inch hole saw bit for that. Now I have a two inch Forstner bit and I thought I had a two inch hole saw bit. It was not a two inch hole saw bit. I needed to look at it. It was actually two and an eighth inch, so that fancy insert didn't work. So I got to throw a round over into my palm router and we'll just throw a little round over on the top, a little round over on the bottom, and everything will be all good again. And we can't leave it looking like that, so we're going to throw a little bit of stain on it just to kind of darken it up and make it look like the rest of the top does. It only makes sense. So this is where my great idea comes into play. Now, I took these aluminum rails off of my planer sled and I'm going to clamp these to my saw. My thought is, if they are clamped to the saw and I set them on the other two benches, that should make my saw be dead flat with the other two benches. Sounds good, right? So with the help of my dad, we go and wrestle all of this weight. And let me tell you, there's a lot of weight here. We get it all wrestled into place. And looky there. That looks freaking great. And look, it's dead level. So guess what? This was a good idea. So just remember, if it looks stupid, it doesn't mean it's a bad idea. And check out that bubble. That bubble is dead center. And man, that thing is sitting right on top of the benches. I couldn't have asked for a better outcome. I could have asked for a lighter outcome, but not a better one. To secure that, I ran some three inch lag bolts from inside the cabinet right into that two inch top. So it's sitting pretty secure. Now it's time to run the cord and the dust collection. Make sure everything's still working properly. In all honesty, I'm kind of glad I did run that two and an eighth inch because my cord and my dust collection was able to go right down through the exact same hole. And I was able to uh, kind of tie the cord up to the hose a little bit. And it looks all nice and neat and clean. And it works freaking great. Everything's moving good. Nothing's binding up anywhere. So this is where I'm going to leave you today. I got everything installed. We're nice and flush. Hang on, let me grab a level real quick. Everything is nice and flush all the way across. I meant to get a video of it over there and I forgot. I apologize for that. But this is huge upgrade for me personally 
Now, I still have T-track to put in along the fence. And I still have some drawer slides I have to purchase. And some upper cabinets that I have to put in up here. So, you have to wait for another video for that one. But, I'm going to go ahead and take you around, show you what I got done this week. And, you guys got to subscribe and uh, come back and check me out on the other stuff. So, down here, I put my shop vacs. And, they were originally housed over there, where that trash can is now sitting. I have the small blue one for my dust collection and the big rigid that I can pull out and use as I need it. And they are both on those remote plugs. That way I can operate them with this remote. Now you can find that remote on Amazon where it comes with five plugs. And I have a couple plugged into the fan that is hung up there by the door. And I have them hung in a couple other places. But this is the cabinet that we got done. I still have another coat to put on it. I'll be getting into that this week. And we will be putting drawer slides and such in there. That outlet down there will hold the drill press and the grinder which will be relocated over here as well I've hung up my Craig jig on the wall as it was intended when I'd originally built it and that's where its home will be this 30 inch top that I have my saw sitting on is not large enough 30 inches is not big enough to give me full swing. If I swing it this way, I can only get about 47 and a half because the handle hits right here. And if I swing it this way, I cannot get the full 60. I can only get about 56 and a half. So if you're going to do this and not put space in between, you're going to need at least 33 inches to get full swing on either side. 30 is not enough. But this is a much, much smaller area than I had over there. And it looks fantastic. It's nice and compact. It might even be cozy, as some people might say. But everything swings good it all moves good other than being short of the 60 and the 50 i don't use those i only go to 45 which easily makes 45 i have plenty of room on either side for 45s not a problem I am hanging up a little bit here on the back where this cord wrap is, but that'll wear a hole in the wall eventually, so it's not really that big a deal. It's hitting on a piece of pine, I think. No, not pine. But either way, it'll wear a hole as it goes on. Alright, well, that's all I have. So, come back and check out the rest of the build. I got, I'm only doing this at $70 every two weeks, so I got $60 worth of drawer slides to buy, about $80 worth of T-Track to buy, so I'll see y'all again in a couple of weeks. Alright, I'll see y'all later.